This podcast is brought to you by Audible. Have you been wanting to read more, but don't seem to have the time? Well, with Audible, you can read your books without having to find the extra time in your busy schedule. Stuck in traffic on your way home from work? Why not marathon the Harry Potter books? In the gym and want to learn about the First Lady? Well, you can listen to Becoming Michelle Obama while doing Leg Day. And if you go to audibletrial.com slash cultivate, you get a month free of Audible. That includes one credit that you can trade in for any audiobook of your choice, access to thousands of audiobooks free to listen to with your account, and best of all, you have access to all of your favorite podcasts in the app as well. So be sure to go to my link, audibletrial.com slash cultivate. That's C-U-L-T-I-V, the number eight, to sign up for a free month of Audible and start reading today. Thank you, Audible, for supporting the show. We are. We are. We are Cultivate. 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 We are Cultivate. Hello and welcome to a special mini-sode of Yield Crime, the show where Maddie and I discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear every Wednesday. This special bi-weekly segment is called Can You Crack the Cramp Word, which is slang for a difficult or obscure term, which I thought was very fitting. And joining me today for the third time on the show is Paul from the History Rage podcast, And before we begin, I'd like to give him the opportunity to tell us a little more about himself and his show before we start the game. Okay, well, hello, everybody. Yeah, as uh, Lindsay says, I'm uh, Paul Babel. Uh, I am 50% of the History Rage podcast, along with my co-host and good friend, Kyle Glover. And basically, it is a podcast that asks quite a varied number of the historical community one question. And that question is... What do you wish people would just stop believing? And some of the answers and some of the rages that we've got in that have been remarkably eye-opening. So mm-hmm. you know, we we have, uh, I think our next upcoming episode is going to be um, Lions Led by Donkeys is just nonsense and the First World War is nothing like poetry. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had a particular favourite of mine, which is Burke and Hare Not Body Snatchers. Yep. Yeah, we've got, I mean, we're, we're actually into recording Series 5 now. We've just actually released Series 2. We've had that many guests come on wow. board. Um, yeah, some things like V-Day, Not the End of the War. A very important one for an American audience there, I feel. Yep. Uh, that was an impressive rage. The Great Escape is not that great as well was another one, Series 2, Episode <laughs> 3. And, and so on and so on. And whatever really annoys a historian about what they wider public think that's what history rage is there to let them vent about nice well as you mentioned because it's in the title of the podcast so what got you interested in history so mostly leaving school because (laughs) yes yes yeah mostly mostly leaving school because at that point um really what that did is that opened the door for me to be able to pick and choose the history that i wanted to study and get interested in Mm-hmm. So I kind of stumbled on watching a couple of documentaries about famous battles and things like that when I was about 18. And I thought, oh, good Lord, this is actually the cool stuff that I did when I was eight. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like My school days, my first ever history term was like Battle of Bosworth, Battle of Hastings, Battle of Agincourt. Totally the way to get like a classroom full of eight-year-old English boys into history. And then mm-hmm. the rest of history was the most boring things I'd ever encountered. Um, we had taught by some of the most boring teachers I'd ever encountered as well. I mean, we had a teacher that did manage to make the English Civil War and the Wars of the Roses dull. Wow. But yeah, once I got into that and I could start looking into the things that I was actually fascinated in, as opposed to being tied to a school or educational syllabus, Mm -hmm. then I've just been going down rabbit holes ever since. And 30 years later, here I am, not only learning history, but trying history as well. Mm Mm-hmm. So that is a good segue into my next question was, you know, you do a lot with living history as part of the foreign field living history group. And what sort of got you interested in living history? Dare I say I met my wife. 
<laughs> um, and uh, and then she was just about to start as a battle reenactor um, in the Wars of the Roses Federation, and I went along, actually not knowing what the hell I was getting myself into um, mm-hmm. at all. But turned up at my first event, which was a uh, it was a memorial event for the Battle of Towton. Uh, which, if you don't know, the Battle of Towton is the longest and bloodiest battle ever fought on English soil. Okay. 1461 kills 1% of the English population. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. It's it's, it's one of our many civil wars. Do mm-hmm. We have about 12. I was going to say, America's there's, there's just quite got a few. The one. Big one. <laughs> yeah. You know, but we've got about 12, yeah. And, yeah, it kills, kills 1% of the English population, about 28,000 people at the time. Just to put that into a little bit of perspective, the entire First World War, only killed one and a half percent of the English population, and the Battle of Towton killed one percent in twelve hours. Wow! Okay. Yeah, and at that point, it's like I'm going along at that event. I get to try my hand at archery. I get to try my hand at sword fighting. At my core, I am still five years old. Who wouldn't <laughs> like spending a weekend sword fighting? Um, yeah. And then from there, I was just kind of drawn into it. And we set up the Foreign Field Living History Group because. A lot of the reenactment scene wasn't doing what I wanted to do mm-hmm. and very much be the change you want to be. So the three of us kind of set up to take a certain element of living history into different periods of history that the reenactment scene doesn't doesn't really have in. So mm-hmm. where we'll be demonstrating things. So we'll demonstrate how to fight a pistol duel, we'll demonstrate how to snatch a body, we'll demonstrate how to strip a three oh three rifle. Um, we are just in the process of starting um, to do live demonstrations of the history of uh, Victorian bare knuckle boxing and pri- prize fighting, oh, um, yeah, we did yeah. practice that this weekend. It really hurts. We did a lot more practice on that. Uh, yeah, that sounds like something that would uh, be very painful, not as glamorous as it's been painted out to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although oddly, safer than modern boxing. Huh. No gloves. Don't punch people in the head because you'll just break your knuckles. There and in 1860, you don't really have the sort of microsurgery that will repair that. So you want to keep them safe. Uh, yeah, but yeah. The, the Queensbury rules where they uh, put on the big boxing gloves and made that fact actually made boxing more dangerous. Oh, the more you know. Did not know yeah. that. So yeah, that's that's a nutshell of me and living history. There you go. Uh, last question. What inspired you to create your podcast? COVID, more than anything else, is, <laughs> is really where it started. You know, we were going out as uh, as the Foreign Field Living History Group and we were doing probably somewhere in the region of about 10 or 12 events a year. And then COVID happened and everything stopped. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to stop banging on about history to an audience. So I started a YouTube channel mm-hmm. for the group, which just gave a little sort of five, 10 minute history lecture on a particular topic each week. That proved to be way more work than I'm willing to do. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of editing and filming and writing and so forth. Um, And then we kind of stumbled on this idea because when we were down at the Chalk Valley History Festival, I think it was last year, we we set up our kind of camera set and we just kept collaring historians that were down there and saying, oh, will you just give us like a one, two minute rant about the thing that you wish everybody would stop believing? And we got Dan Snow going, Vikings don't have horned helmets. couple of other historians coming in saying you know first world war is rubbish or do you know what there were other nations in uh, in d-day oh, you know, yeah. and the entirety of the entirety of d-day is not omaha beach and mm-hmm. these sorts of rants were coming out and we thought this is a, this is a workable idea but we thought we can't actually do this in the youtube format without being able to travel around the country and film everybody and know that so we, we latched onto the idea of let's do this as a podcast and myself and Kyle actually came up with about eight rages each for us to record our own because we honestly did not think that we'd get that many guests. Mm-hmm. And today I have just booked guest number 52. We haven't repeated a guest yet and we still haven't been able to uh, put our own rages in yet. That's awesome. And we've managed to score a couple of slots at the upcoming Short Rally History Festival to do something which I'm very nervous about, which is History Rage Live. Oh, wow. So we're actually going to be doing that in front of a live audience where I'm telling you I am going to get my first rage in there. There you go. That'll be cool. I'm excited Mm. for you. Hello. Thank you very much for downloading History Rage. 
We are the podcast that asks leading historians, what's the one thing that you really wish people would just stop believing? And we have a lot of fun finding out the answers. If you want a taster, we'll just have a listen on, as our historians will and truly let fly. People will say that William Burke was a body snatcher, that Burke and Hare were body snatchers. What really winds me up is this almost pride that we have in this country that we were that, that we were just basically uh, old men with pitchforks lining the cliffs so first there is this idea that the wars of the roses were between yorkshire and lancashire the one thing again it just it's just, i hear it and it just makes makes my head explode everybody seems to believe when we talk about the battle of the bulge it wasn't all hard snows and blizzards and... This idea that the landings on Omaha Beach were this bloody disaster because it's patently not true. Everybody on the telly and in newspapers referred to the E-Day as the end of the war. It was not the end of the war. It's people who say things like, the RAF was the last defence against the Nazi hordes in the Battle of Britain. That's the thing that really, really bugs me. And there you have it. So if you've liked that, give us a follow, download the back catalogue, come and join the History Rage. Thank you. All right. Are you ready for some Victorian slang terms? Hit me with it. Okay. Your first term is brace up brace up (laughs) okay so i'm going to make educated guess here i mean am i talking american term or english term or just victorian here i think it's a an english victorian term i think it's an english victorian term right then i'm going to narrow it down to three which will be either put your coat on just deal with it or shut up are either of those your final answer um, no, because I can't have all of those my final answer. Can I? <laughs> I'm going to go with that kind of man up, just deal with it kind of option. Okay, so brace up is a term that means to pawn stolen goods. Oh, right. Okay, we're definitely on a more criminal theme here. I should, I should be good at this being a historian of crime. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so keep the crime theme in mind for your second term, A-G. which is... Fidlum Ben. So F I D L U M and then Ben like the person. Oh, and I have heard this. It's interesting that you've heard this term before. I've heard it. I can't remember what it means. <laughs> yeah. Which is probably should have had that the other way around. It's f- Fidlum Ben. I'm going to have to go with Horse Race Fixer. Horse Race Fixer. Okay. So Fidlum Ben are thieves who take anything they can lay their hands upon. Uh-huh. Good Lord. I'm just picturing somebody that like has the big pockets and they're just like tossing a bunch of jewelry and coins in their pockets and they jingle as they run out. But that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> like the cartoonish type. Yeah. Throwing everything you can in your coat. Yeah. So those are your two Victorian those are my two, slang Those terms. are my two. And yeah, for a... Uh, well, I'll, I'll throw in the defense here that I'm a... Uh, I, I'm a historian of Georgian crime, there not you go. Victorian. Yeah, there, there you go. go. That's my story, and I'm going to stick to that. I agree. I concur. All right. <laughs> so I'll just have to have you back on after you've had your other interview about uh, Peaky Blinders and see if you have any other terms that maybe you can... Maybe I'll find some Georgian terms for you and have you back on. I look forward to it. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> well, on that note, I'd like to thank Paul for joining me today for Can You Crack the Cramp Word? And before we go, can you tell our listeners when new episodes of your podcast drop and where they can find you on social media? Okay, so um, History Rage uh, broadcasts currently uh, once every fortnight on a Monday. However, as of August, that is going to go to weekly because we've managed to record enough episodes that far in advance now that we can actually increase the output. And if you want to support the show, you can subscribe to us on Patreon and you'll actually get episodes three months ahead of general public release. Not to mention getting the coveted History Rage mug as well with a rage of your choice on it. But yeah, every um, as of August, it will be absolutely every Monday on all major podcast providers. Cool. And if people wanted to find you on social media, where could they find you? 
Uh, if you search for History Rage on Facebook, you will find us there. Uh, we are at History Rage on Twitter, or individually, you can get us. I am at Paul Bavel, and Kyle is at Kyle G History. And if you just hashtag History Rage with your own rage, we want to know what really gets up your nose, what you wish people would stop believing. Uh, and you can throw that into there with the hashtag History Rage. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking the time to come back on the show, Paul. I appreciate it. Always you, a pleasure. You coming back on. And on that note, as always, I'm Lindsay, and I'll see you next time with another tale as old as crime.